We think about Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B. None, all of these celebrities were, all of these celebrities were put in these positions to influence our people to do wickedness. Bring it out. It's their purpose. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three. Oh. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. God says, evil communications corrupt good manners. Be very mindful of what you watch and what you listen to. It will corrupt good manners, which is the laws of God. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's gonna rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non violent Bible-based movement. IUIC. What's your nationality? What's your nationality? Um, African American. African American? What'd you say? African American, what'd you say? Huh? Okay, I'll praise them. What you say, sis? African American. Watch this. I want y'all to read this. What's happened is we have discontinued from our heritage. Right. God never called us black. He never called us African American. That's he right. never called us Negro. He never called us colored. You understand what I'm saying? We are actually the children of God. We are the real Jews in the Bible. That's Watch right. this. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Oh, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. It was prophesied that the Israelites would discontinue from their heritage. What race of people have, do, have no idea what their heritage is? We think our heritage is Christmas, is Halloween. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of us do. Not all of us, but a lot of us think that our heritage is Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, June huh? June 18th. June 18th, right? Juneteenth, all of these things. These are that's not our heritage. Our heritage is not smoking weed, getting high. Every we, a, lot, a lot of us when we come home, what, what do we look forward to? Getting drunk, getting high, sleeping around. We think that's what our heritage is. God says we have discontinued from our heritage, who we are. We have forgotten that this image is our Messiah. That is not, this right here is not the image of Christ. That's that right. is the true biblical depiction of Christ. We're gonna get, we're gonna get there for you. Get our uh, Revelation chapter one and four, verse 14. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Both, all of y'all are Jews according to the Bible. You are not African American. You are the children of the book. This book right here is your history book. You understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Uh -huh. Yo. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What we are about to redo, uh, do is reveal to you the revelation of Jesus the Christ. Our people have not been shown Jesus. We think that Jesus is a white man with blonde hair, long stringy hair, and he, he teaches every everybody gets into the kingdom of heaven. That is not Jesus the Christ according to the Bible. Read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jump to verse 14. This is the true depiction of Jesus the Christ. Read. Verse 14. Uh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The hair on Christ's head and the hairs on his face, he had a beard as well. They were white and they were woolly. What is wool? Wool is sheep's textured hair. What race of people have woolly textured hair? You do. You do. All of you are children of the Most High God. All of you have the same blood running in you as Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. That's right. That is why we say you have discontinued from your heritage. A lot of our people don't know that that is our our Savior, our Messiah. Read. As white as snow, huh? and his eyes 
Where is a flame of fire? And the, and the whites of Christ's eyes, they were red. Why? Because he liked to drink wine. His first miracle was what? He turned water into wine. He didn't just pour it out. He drunk it, right? Read. And his feet like unto fine bread. So my sister, I can see your feet. Are you going to have white feet and a black body? No. no. You're going to have the same color feet as the rest of your body. So Christ's feet, read that part again. And his feet like unto fine brass. So Christ's feet was like fine brass. What color is brass? Like gold. Like gold. Gold is a derivative of what? Brown. Right? Let's find out how brown he was. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. If you burn that paper, what color does it turn? Black. If you burn your shirt, what color does it turn? Black. If you burn anything, what color does it turn? So according to the Bible, Christ was darkened in any one of us out here standing. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Understand that royalty is coursing through your veins. You have the same blood as Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Yes. Give me Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. So let me ask y'all a question. If Jesus the Christ looked like that and he was a Jew, what does that make us? If Jesus the Christ was a black man and he was a Jew, what does that make all of you? Jews according to the Bible. That is correct. You are the real Jews according to the Bible. So now the question is, who is over there in Israel claiming to be Jews? White people. But hold on, they're claiming to be Jews. Something ain't right. You see what I'm saying? Read what you got. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Bring it up. I know thy works. So this is the most high God speaking to the real Jews. He says, I know thy works. What race of people go through the most works in tribulation and trouble on the planet? Right. We do. Read. I know thy works and tribulations huh? and poverty. What race of people goes through the most poverty throughout all the world? Is it is it the so-called white man? No. It's our people. Read. But thou art bread. God says, even though you go through the most works and tribulation and you're in the most poverty, God says you are rich. You know why you're rich? Because this whole Bible belongs to you. The whole entire planet is waiting for us to rule it. That is our divine purpose on this earth. That's right. Everybody always says, I'm a king. I'm a queen. Guess what? You are correct. But you were meant to rule the entire earth. The reason why we're in the slums and in the ghettos is because we have disobeyed God's commandments. You, All of you are meant to be in rulership along with the so-called black man. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all are kings and princesses on this earth. Read on. And I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy is a disgusting lie. My sisters, are y'all hearing this? God says he knows the blasphemy. Read. Of them would say they are Jews. What race of people are saying they are Jews, the so-called white men? He says he knows the disgusting lie of them which say they are Jews, read. And are not. And are what? And are not. They are not the real Jews. You are the real Jews according to the Bible. You are the people of the book. This whole planet was made for you to rule. But because we have disobeyed God's commandments, now we are brought to the bottom. Because we like to smoke weed, because we like to get high, because we like to get drunk, because we like to sleep around. You understand what I'm saying? All of these things are the, are the reasons for our captivity. Read on. But or the synagogue of Satan. Those people over there in Israel, they are the synagogue of Satan. Right. They are the, the, the headquarters of Satan. Right. The people that saying they are Jews, they are counterfeits for your nationality. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You are the real Jews. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. My family right here, let me ask y'all a question. You got a child, right? If your child is doing something wrong, what happens? Punish them. You punish them. This right here, is our punishment for not doing what God has told us to do. Right. Understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God said if you didn't listen to God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To do all of his commandments. Don't, don't a lot of our people say you can't do all of God's commandments? So wouldn't God be a bad father if he told us to do all his commandments but we couldn't do them? Would you tell your kid to do something and then they couldn't and it's impossible for them to do it? No. So guess what? When God said keep my commandments, it's possible for us to keep God's commandments. Right. But, but guess what? We'll, we'll walk along this street right here and keep 10, ten laws of the so-called white man. But then once it comes to God's commandments, a lot of our people say you can't do all of God's commandments. Right. You can do all things through Christ except what God says. Does that make sense? No. Read. 
But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day Three. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God told us curses will come upon our people and overtake us if we disobeyed his commandments. Right. This right here is a curse that came from God because we disobeyed his commandments. Slavery, us being put in the slums and the ghettos even to this day is a curse from God because we have disobeyed his commandments. Read on, verse 16. We're going to read and find out. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. God says we are cursed in the city. You look around. Do white neighborhoods look like this? No, they do not. Not at all. Not one bit. We are cursed in the city. You go to Chicago. Guess what it looks like? It looks just like this. Right. You go to Memphis. Guess what? It looks just like this. You go to Florida. Guess what? It looks just like this. You go to Russia. Guess what? It looks just like this. these conditions. Because these curses are brought upon all of our people. God deals with a nation. A lot of times we think that God only deals with one. God deals with races of people. Right. He brought the entire... When, when, when Jesus the Christ... Was Jesus Christ perfect? He was perfect, right? Guess what? He was still in Roman captivity. You understand what I'm saying? Daniel was still in captivity in Babylon. You understand what I'm saying? God deals with a race of people because our race disobeyed God's commandments. We were put in horrible conditions. That is God's punishment for breaking his commandments. Read on. Cursed shall thou be in the city, huh? and cursed shall thou be in the field. Slavery. Who, who's familiar with slavery? Y'all familiar with slavery? Guess what? We were cursed in the field picking sugarcane, tobacco, Right? All of these different things that we pick in the field is because we broke God's commandments. The reason why we had to get our back beat from sun up to sun down is because we broke God's commandments. So, if we were brought into slavery for breaking God's commandments, what is the solution? Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. What do y'all say? What's the solution? Come on, y'all. Right. Exactly. We must keep God's commandments. You understand what I'm saying? How but do you do that? How do you do that with everybody in the world? Thank you. That's a good that's a that's an excellent question. We're gonna get it to you, sis. Sis said, how do you keep the commandments with so much stuff going on? Right? So much evil going on. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel. Once you find out you're an Israelite, read. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? This is what God requires of you. Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God. We must fear God. We must be afraid of his judgments. When, you are, when you're thinking about stealing, you must, you, you must think in your mind, okay, God sent this white man over us. So maybe I shouldn't steal because maybe the police may come back around and find out who did it. Maybe I shouldn't steal because somebody may, be, may get angry and God may put that spirit on them to come back and uh, exact vengeance. You understand what I'm saying? Because God is the one who provides life and death. Read on. To walk in all his ways. Huh? And to love him, and to serve, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord. So that's what God requires of us to keep the commandments of God. Now you asked a very important question. You said, "How do you keep the commandments of God?" Give me Joshua chapter one and verse eight. There's a couple of ways in which you can keep the commandments of God. It even comes down to the way that you dress as well, right? Watch this, uh, Joshua chapter one and verse eight. One of the things that we have to do is we must constantly keep our minds on the laws of God. Because a lot of times, what, what are we doing? We listen to this music that is not in sync with the laws of God. We listen. What type of music do we listen to as a race of people? Murder? Drugs? You understand what I'm saying? All of these things are contrary to the laws of God. Like, we, we, we listen to kill a nigga, kill a nigga a thousand times a day and then wonder why, dang, why is the thought of me killing a nigga in my head? Bring it up. You done listen to it all day long. Right? Read what you got. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. So we must be speaking this Bible all the time. Because guess what? If we're not speaking this Bible, what else are we going to be speaking? Social media, whatever's going on in social media, whatever's going on in the world, sports. None of the, all of these things are distractions to keep us in these conditions from the laws of God. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. But thou shalt meditate therein. You have to meditate. We think meditation. Well, we've been taught meditation. You think of an Indian when you think of meditation, don't you? You think of an Indian with his legs crossed. With his... That's not meditation. God says you must meditate on the laws of God. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. You have to constantly have these things going through your mind throughout the day. Else you're going to get caught up without even knowing it. Read. 
But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night. When you wake up in the morning, we have something we call study, pray, and apply. So we 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 uh, study, we pray, and we apply. Meaning what? We read, we study the Bible, and we apply the Bible. We think of think upon ways on how to apply the Bible. So you have to constantly be reading, constantly be studying the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That's how you're gonna do all the commandments by constantly thinking on the commandments first. Read. For then shall thou make that. For then, when you're meditating on the laws of God on the Bible, read. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That's when you will have success. And to answer your question on how to keep the laws of God, you have to constantly be meditating on the laws of God. God. Give me our uh, Second Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse sixteen. Is that what I want about evil communication? Uh, fifteen thirty-three. Fifteen thirty-three. Read that. We have to also be very cognitive of what we are putting into our mind. The music that we listen to is a large problem. In our communities, the media that we listen, that we watch, is a large problem within our communities. I, what we look when, when you think about our celebrities, who you think about? Yeah, boy. Right. You think, we, we think about a lot of rappers who, who who's not promoting um, uh, the building up of our communities. We think about Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B. None. All of these celebrities were. All of these celebrities were put in these positions to influence our people to do wickedness. Bring it out. It's their purpose. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Oh. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. God says evil communications corrupt good manners. Be very mindful of what you watch and what you listen to. It will corrupt good manners, which is the laws of God. So when you are listening, when you're watching, for example, a lot of our women, we, they like to watch a lot of Cardi B. They like to listen to a lot of Cardi B. And then what happens? Now they end up having uh, habits of twerking, right? Out in the open. Our sisters nowadays, you would, imagine, we came from, in slavery, we were better off in slavery. It, it was no black women twerking on our no, on no cars, on no horse carriages. You understand what I'm saying? We are, it, it's, it's madness nowadays. Our sisters out here twerking on cars, getting, talking about, I, I'm a city girl. All of this stuff promotes single, do you know what that really mean? I'm about to be a single mother, I'm about to get an STD. That's what that, that's what that means. When you hear these evil communications, you have to, you have to be mindful of it. Let me not put that in, in my brain. So you must be you must first meditate on the laws of God day and night. When you wake up, read a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? We got classes online seven days a week. Watch one of the classes. It'll keep your mind away from the wickedness that's within the world. You can't even go down the street without seeing a billboard of some wickedness. So you gotta you gotta you gotta counteract all of these evils that we see in the world. Right. Right? Read what you got. Sirach chapter 27, verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet. So God says, if you be among the indiscreet, you know who the indiscreet is? Those who are not keeping God's commandments. Right. Those right. who are not accustomed yet to applying God's commandments. If you be among the indiscreet, some of this is our friends. Some of these are our family members. I had to separate myself from some of my family members. Because they were they were contrary to the laws of God. They love to smoke. They love to uh to uh, drink. You have to push them you have to honestly you have to push them away because the, what would they say if you if you if you around uh uh 10 people getting high or you around 10 dummies guess what you probably are if, if you're the 11th one in the group guess what you are you probably the, you probably gonna you either you either are the 11th dummy or you're gonna be the 11th dummy so you gotta you gotta be mindful of who you are around read it again from the top Sirach chapter 27 verse 12 uh -huh. if thou be among the indiscreet Observe the time. Observe the time. Meaning what? Watch how long you are around them. You understand what I'm saying? You are you around some of your family or friends that don't want to keep the commandments of God. Watch how be very mindful of how long you are around them. You you you'll be talking right. You'll be just be talking. Hey, how you been? I've been I've been good. This is that and the third. And then all of a sudden, hey, you see Shawty over there? Or 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 or, or hey man, I'm about to go smoke some weed. That's what that's what the conversation is gonna flow into. So you have to observe the time. You have to be very mindful of how long you're around. Zephaniah chapter right. 2 and verse 1. So here is the opposite side of that. If you want to keep God's commandments, you must meditate on God's laws. You must make sure that you are cognitive of what you're putting in your mind, what you are watching, right? 
And you must also be very mindful of who you are around. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together. God says we must gather together as a race of people. And even within, I, I guarantee you, there's 10, 15 people in here that are divided against someone else in this community right here. Just this community. There's 10 to 15 people just in here alone that hate one another. I can guarantee it. God says we must gather ourselves together. We must come together and unify as a nation of people. Read. Right. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather yourselves together. Oh, nation not desired. We must gather together. Why? Because we are that nation that is not desired. When God says we will be cursed in the cities, nobody likes our people. The so-called white man is shooting us left and right. The Chinese man is dragging us through the hair stores. The Arab man is still selling us in slavery to this day on the west coast of Africa. God says we must gather ourselves together. We're the only one that desire each other. So to answer your question again, another thing is you must gather around like-minded individuals that are going to keep God's commandments. Do we have anyone, uh, anything around here that uh, they can maybe go to on a Saturday or something like that? Even if not, we got classes online seven days a week. You know what I'm saying? If you can't gather around, we may not have a school right here. We got a school in Columbia. If you can make it to Columbia, gather around there. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Read out. Before the decree, bring forth. Before the day pass, as the shall. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come before, come upon you. So God says we must gather together before destruction comes because World War III is coming to America. The same way Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, the same way all the other wicked nations were destroyed, America has its end. America is not invulnerable. In fact, this is the most wicked society uh, ever. You understand what I'm saying? America will be destroyed. God says we must gather together before the destruction. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 